Hi guys, welcome to Kristen Kelly TV. So today I'm going to be doing a story time combined with uh, kind of like some questions people have asked me about plastic surgery. Like a lot of people have said, um, you know, like, oh, you're so fake, you have some plastic surgery, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think people really like to pick out insecurities of other people that they have on themselves. Like I have a very tiny, petite, thin nose, and I find that a lot of people are always saying stuff like, oh, you know, your nose is so thin, your nose is Michael Jackson, you're this, you're that. And I know it's because they're insecure about their own nose. So I don't normally care about what other people say about myself. Um, however, you know, there was a comment in my last video and someone was like, you're so fake and you had this and da 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 and like all this stuff. And I'm, you know, normally, I don't care about what people say, but I do just kind of want to like, you know, set the record straight. Uh, I have never had a nose job. I've never had plastic surgery done to my face. I have only had a breast augmentation. So I thought that I would do kind of a story time about my breast augmentation, about, um, you know, like why and all of that. So if this is something that you are interested in hearing about, please stay tuned. Okay, so I always had very, very small breasts. My mother had very small breasts. It was just like in our family. And I decided that I was gonna get breast augmentation when I was fairly young. I was in beauty pageants my whole life. And I just always had to put like chicken cutlets, chicken cutlets with these like fake boobs. I actually have a bunch, I should grab one. Um, that you like put into your bra to make like it appear that you have a fuller bosom when you really don't. So I would use chicken, cutlet, chicken cutlets all the time. They're not really chicken cutlets, but we call them chicken cutlets all the time. And I would also tape my breasts, kind of like what drag queens do. So you tape up the little breasts you do have, and then you insert the fake breasts inside over it. And I would do that like all the time. And I just knew when I was old enough, I was going to get breast augmentation. My parents are very religious and they don't really care about appearance. You know, my mom has had her makeup done maybe twice in her whole life. You know, my mom thinks it's ridiculous that people get their nails done. So I come from a family where it was very strange that I wanted breast augmentation because my parents are just so like, you know, anti that. And I had a job, so I was making... Why are my dogs barking? So I had a job, so I was making all of my own money and I decided that I was going to get my breast done. I had decided probably when I was like 15 that I was gonna get breast augmentation. So when I turned 18, I started looking into it. I found a doctor. Honestly, I really wish I hadn't gone with that doctor. I, the internet, yes, we had the internet. However, it wasn't like it is nowadays, you know? There wasn't Instagram, there wasn't Twitter, there wasn't Facebook. There wasn't even MySpace at that time. So I didn't really have much to go on other than I looked up a plastic surgeon that was kind of close where my parents live. And I got the procedure. It was very scary. I also don't feel like the doctor was a very good doctor. Not that he did a bad work because I do think he did good work on me. However, just his demeanor, he wasn't like the nicest person. The staff there wasn't very nice. In hindsight, I wish I didn't go there, but my parents were just not on board with the whole thing. So I didn't really have anyone to talk to. I didn't really have anyone to, you know, be like, oh yeah, let's go look at this doctor. Let's go look at this doctor. These are questions you want to ask. My parents were kind of just like, don't do it. No, actually my dad had no idea what was going on. It was just my mom, but I um, was like, don't do it. No, like my mom was just so against it, but like didn't go with me or anything. So when I got the procedure done, then, you know, I was actually like, hold on, hold on one second. And when the nurse was putting the mask on my face and she kind of just shoved it on my face. And I didn't like that. Like, I still think about that. The fact that they were just so uncaring and it really was like about money with them. So I think that you definitely should do research and find like a doctor that you really like. I opted for a size that wasn't too big because I naturally was, you know, very, I had like no breasts really. I had very little breast tissue. I was like an A cup, you know. Um, also like one breast was bigger than the other, which is a very typical thing. So I got 350 cc's, which is a, 
which is a lot on some people, but isn't a lot on others. And it really, you know, I can, I don't really wear bras, but like if I was, you know, wear a bra and push up my boobs, you know, my boobs might look big, but I've never considered myself like big breasted even after having plastic surgery. I don't think that it really made such a huge, you know, difference. I think that really like how you, like what bras you wear and like what you wear will make a bigger difference, you know. Um, if I could do it again, I probably would have gotten a bigger cup size. However, I had such small breasts that it probably is like best that I did. I did saline, which is safer. Saline is essentially, you know, like salt water, sugar water. So is it sugar or salt? It's sugar. Uh, it's like sugar water. So, or salt water. I think, it's salt, I think it's salt water. So that if, you know, your breast, to, if your breast was to explode, it wouldn't hurt your body, which I don't think that that even makes sense because I don't think that could even happen. Um, so if I could redo it, I would have done silicone instead of saline. I don't really have any, oh God, I'm so sorry about my dogs barking. I don't really have anything bad to say about getting breast augmentation. I think that with anything in your life, like if I've always said, like if I had a big nose, I would definitely have gotten a nose job. You know, I, I think that if there is something about yourself that you do not like, fix it. You know, you have one life, you have one very, very short life. So fix something if you do not like it. And I think that goes for everything. Uh, I also think that it's, you know, completely someone's, body it's someone's body it's someone's choice you know just like other things or your choice with your body you know what color hair you have and such I think that it's your choice of what you want to do with your body I also don't think it's right for people to put down other people who have had plastic surgery um myself having plastic surgery at such a young age I was a teenager I was 19 when I got the procedure I do not think that I was ready to get plastic surgery however if I had waited a few years. I don't believe that I would have done it. I think that I was so young that it really was like, I was like, I'm young. I'm going to do this right now. So I did it immediately. And I think that if I could have gone back and not done it for a few years, I probably wouldn't have done it at all. And you know, sometimes I do think about the fact that I have like a foreign object in my body. And what is that? You know, is that like good for you? Is that, I mean, it can't possibly be good for you. You know, like maybe my body would have developed in such a way. I, you know, I don't know. Oh, do my breasts feel fake? No. Because I got my breasts done, you know, over a decade ago, I have had fat that has gone around my breast tissue. My breast tissue itself has become bigger. So the tissue on top of the implant has. But if you do take your hands like this and you put it like underneath, you can definitely feel there's like a bag in there. I have no idea what my breasts would look like if I took the implants out and I don't want to know what they would look like. I love having the breasts that I had always wanted. I was always very insecure about my breasts. I always felt like I was less of a woman. I always felt insecure about my breasts. So I am really happy that I did that. It did take about a year for my breasts to be normal, I would say, because they're very hard at first, almost like rock hard. So it takes time for that to like go down. And yeah, I'm trying to think of like any other questions, you know, um, it's, I don't know. Um, was it pain, was recovery painful? Uh, recovery was not really painful. It was okay. Um, I, they do give you medicine and stuff. Uh, I went, oh, I had the incisions underneath the breast. I had originally had wanted to go through the armpit. We didn't end up doing that. Breast reduction. A lot of people ask me questions about breast reduction, which is actually kind of funny because I, you know, didn't really have breasts, so I got breast implants instead of reduction. Uh, but I have, like, a, quite a few friends that have had breast reduction, which you should have breast reduction if, you're, if it hurts your back, if it impacts your life. Do whatever you want. Same with making them bigger, make them smaller, do whatever you want for your life. Do have to say though that with breast reduction, there is a tremendous amount of scarring because they have to go around the breast and around the nipple and actually move the nipple and then take out the extra fat and then put the nipple back on. So there is quite a bit of scarring with breast reduction. So I'm not the best person to talk about that. Uh, that's really 
all the knowledge that I know is that it just makes your breasts um, smaller, clearly. And there's a lot more scarring. You're not supposed to wear a bra at first when you get your breasts done. They tell you not to wear a bra for, I, you know, honestly, I don't even remember how long, but it's like a certain amount of time. For me, I just don't really wear bras. I have like nipple covers that, you know, like they're very thin little covers that go over your nipples so that you don't have like, you know, hard nipples when you're out in public. Not because I think there's anything wrong with having hard nipples when you're in public. I just hate how men will like stare at you, you know? So I just like to wear those. But my breasts are, you know, they're not uh, sagging. I know a lot of people are like, oh, you gotta wear bras, your, bra your breasts will sag. That's actually quite contradictory from the truth because if you Google, you know, does wearing bras make your breasts not sag? It's actually wearing bras makes your breasts sag more. Uh, so I recommend not wearing bras if at all possible, if you can't. Um, I mean, some women, you know, can't. Uh, for me, having breast augmentation was wonderful because I don't have to wear a bra. I can just put nipple covers on and my breasts still look full. Can you breastfeed when you have kids? When you have breast augmentation. Yes, you can breastfeed when you're breast augmentation. I've never been pregnant. I've never actually breastfed, but you can. It's a completely different like section of your breast. It does not interfere with that, so you do not have to worry about it. Now, I was like obsessed with breasts before I got them done. Like I was really obsessed with breasts. Like if I was walking a mall and I saw someone with nice breasts, I'd be like, hey, do you have your breasts done? Can you please tell me information? I was obsessed with breasts. Like obsessed. You know, and after getting them done, I was it's I was kind of ashamed at first, I have to say. Like I didn't tell my roommates when I moved into college because it's just really no one's business. But I was ashamed because I didn't want them to think like I was fake or I didn't want them to think, you know, that I was insecure about my breasts because maybe they would attack me for that. I don't know. Uh, as I got older, I realized, you know, it is socially acceptable to have a breast augmentation. I feel like it's very socially acceptable now. Uh, I do feel comfortable telling people now. I have no problem telling them. However, there is the fact that if you tell people you have breast augmentation, they automatically are like, oh, well, that person had that plastic surgery. They must have had everything else done. Like, their lips and their nose and their cheeks and their everything and their face is fake. Uh, which isn't true. I've never had plastic surgery on my face. So... I don't like when people are like, oh, you're so fake, uh, because then it's like, when I say, oh, well, all I've had is breast augmentation, they're like, oh, okay, so you've clearly had everything else. Just so stupid. But, same time, if you want to do anything on your face, please do it, especially because that is like your money maker. That's what people see all the time. You know, you do want to have a good face forward. I'm trying to think what else. On the same note of telling people, I do have to say that you should be wary about telling people really anything that... If you're not sure of the type of person they are, because I do have to say, you know, I had one friend from high school who asked me, like, all the time after school was out of she's like, oh my god, do you have your breasts done? Do you have your breasts done? Do you have your breasts done? And I was like, no, I didn't, you know, I lied straight to her face because I didn't want to tell her because I didn't want her to know because I knew she was a very two-faced person, you know, like, to my face, she'd be like, that's wonderful, and then she would turn around and talk shit about me, and I knew she would do that. And then years later, when I was, like, 23 or 24, maybe even 25, uh, I was at my parents and I hung out with her and she was like, did you have a breast augmentation? And I was like, you know what? I did. And that same night I saw her talking to some random guy, looking at him, looking at me and like talking about, like I could see her mouthing like she had her boobs done, like pointing at me. And I could see him being like, oh, cool. Wouldn't know that, you know? So it was just like the second she found out, she like ran to a stranger to like tell him. Wanted validation that the only reason I looked better than her was because I'm fake and I have breast augmentation because I'm a fake girl. So yeah, I do think you should be careful about who you tell that you've had really any surgeries because people are very judgmental and people love talking shit to other people, like really love talking shit to other people more than you can even imagine. So definitely be careful of who you tell. At the same time, I don't think it's anyone's business. And I do think that it is very rude when people, you know, like just come out and ask somebody, not for like a scientific reason. Because when I was researching breast augmentations, I like would go up to strangers and ask them. But it was because I really wanted to know because I was interested in getting it. If somebody is just like a two-faced person, you know, you can feel that out and you can feel that they're not a person that you should tell things to. 
Also, I wouldn't post pictures, like, if you do get something, you know, like your lips or your nose or something done. I wouldn't post about that on social media because maybe right now you don't mind showing off, like, oh, look at my, you know, new nose. But maybe five years from now, that might haunt you, you know? Because once you put something out on social media, it is out there forever. So you should know that. Um, when I went on Bad Girls Club, actually, so when I went on that, it was a national television show, I knew that people were going to ask me about my breasts. Because even though they do look very natural, you know, they're, they're not real and you can tell fake boobs. And the second, so I had already said to myself that I was not going to lie, that I was just, yeah, I've had breast augmentation, you know, like it's, it is what it is. And within a second of being in this house, this girl was like, are your boobs fake? And I was like, yeah. She's like, are your lips fake? I'm like, no. She's like, is your nose fake? No. But you know, I knew that people have a hard time, I think, when someone is better looking than them, which I don't want to sound vain, but I am a pretty looking girl. And I know that. I know I have a pretty face. I mean, I know I'm a lot better looking when I have my hair and makeup done. I'm not stupid. But I know just I have a very pretty face, and I know that. No, I know I'm not going to have it forever, too, but I know that. Um, I have no problem telling other girls, like, wow, you're beautiful, or putting other girls, you know, up because I don't feel the need to put anyone down but a lot of girls will like put other girls down because they're you know they feel insecure um which at the end of the day like you're never going to be the prettiest you're never going to be the tallest you're never going to be the thinnest you're never going to be the best dressed you're never going to be the best of anything and I don't mean that you're not amazing I just mean you will make yourself insane like insane if you try to outdo every person you meet the only thing that you can do is just be the best possible version of yourself. You know, like just be a happy person who, of course there has been times where I looked in the mirror and I was like, wow, I don't like this about myself. And I changed it, you know, like I was like, oh, I, I mean, even right now, like I, I want to lose a little weight and my arms are looking a little flabby, but that's something I want to change and I'll change it. You can't, but I would never go up to someone and be like, you're fat, you're a fat pig, because I'm insecure about my arms, you know? Uh, and it's also the day, the day and age we live in that people love to, like, nitpick, and they love to be, like, you know, to put other people down. And there's this girl I'm following who's 13, and I was looking at her Instagram comments, and people were like, your lips are fake. She's 13, her lips aren't fake, you know? It's like people just, they want to find something about you to nitpick even with Kylie Jenner you know everyone's like well look at her now you know look at her now yes she bought her appearance yes Kylie Jenner has a very fake looking appearance but when it comes down to it Kylie Jenner is still Kylie Jenner she's just a human being you know so yes her outside looks more attractive which is great good for her did she buy it yes yes she did should you talk shit about her if you think that she looks great then that's all that matters you know people other people um, is there any other plastic surgery I would get? It's a great question. Um, I'm gonna sneeze. Hey. <laughs> okay, excuse me. Uh, so this is actually considered cosmetic surgery, but I want to get LASIK. I actually just went to a consultation for that. So yes, I would get LASIK, which is considered cosmetic, but I don't think it is. Um, I have like bunions, like I have very ugly feet, uh, which I'm, I used to be very self-conscious about my feet. Uh, actually that same girl I was talking about, the one in the boob story who kept pushing me and then found out and like talked shit about me. I went on vacation with her once when we were like very young and she said to somebody, oh, well, you know, Kristen has the ugliest feet of anyone. And I cried and I cried and I cried. Um, but now I like, I show off my feet. I have ugly feet. There's nothing I can do about that. I have ugly feet. I have ugly feet. And I'm proud of it. But if I was to do plastic surgery, I might get my ugly feet taken care of. Um, after I have babies, like I'm talking about all my babies, I'm definitely going to get a tummy tuck. Um, I would love to get an, like an ass job. I'm not, I'm never going to. Um, but I would love to get a Brazilian butt lift. I'd love to get all the fat sucked out of the rest of my body and put in my ass. Um, I want to do that just because I think that it looks unnatural. It looks pretty fake and 
it's just not something I want, I really want to do, but if it was like somebody was like, here's a ticket for some free plastic surgery, excuse me, I would probably do that. No, I hate when people on, I, I mean, I hate when people in general like tell other people how to live their lives, because I definitely think you should live your life how you want to, I think you should do what you want, um, on your, you know, do whatever you want for yourself, uh, Oh, I don't consider Botox plastic surgery, by the way, because it's not. Um, but I do get Botox on my jaw because I have TMJ, so, like, my jaw will hurt a lot. And I have noticed that it, it does reduce the size of your jaw. It makes your, instead of looking more square, your jaw looks more like a heart-shaped. So, yeah, Google that. Um, Google Botox on your mandible muscle, but you can just put, like, in your jaw. Um, and you'll find information on that. And I definitely found that that helped because I had one side of my jaw that I clearly would like chew more on and so that so one side of my face was bigger so I had Botox I think I had like 50 maybe units I had like quite a bit of Botox on one side of my jaw at one point and nothing on the other side and it like shrunk that side of my jaw and it really helped me so much like it just made such a big difference because I really felt like my face almost looked lopsided when I was taking pictures how much was it Normally, but you know, honestly, I can't even remember because it was so long ago. But normally, breast augmentation is around like five thousand. Honestly, back to the point where I was saying earlier about how people a lot of times will like make fun of something, you know, because like, oh, you have Michael Jackson nose because they're jealous because they have a big nose. There was this girl who would make fun of me for having breast augmentation. Like, I'm talking about, she called me fake, and she like, she just called me fake, and she called me conceited, and um, that I was. Uh, you know, just all this, like, really awful stuff. She ended up, like, two years after making fun of me all the stuff, getting breast augmentation because she could afford it. You know, so a lot of people, I feel like they do, they'll make fun of plastic surgery that other people get because they're jealous. Uh, I also think the plastic surgery should be tasteful. I think it should be something that you don't really notice. The lights are, like, so hot right now, and I'm wearing my U-part wig. So my head is, like, so heavy, and I just want to take this off and get in the shower and take off my makeup. So... If there are any questions that you guys have on breast augmentations, on the surgery, on anything else uh, that you want me personally to ask, I definitely think that you should always, you know, Google stuff and look that up first. Oh, also, now that there, now there's websites like WebMD and Real Self, which, like, you can upload, you know, surgery pictures and other people can write you back and whatnot. You know, so there are so many resources that you have now, so you can, and, you know, Yelp and can make sure that you're going to the right plastic surgeon definitely do a lot of research because it is your body and you know if they do surgery wrong you know you can really pay for it in the long run if there's too much scar tissue they might not be able to perform another surgery on you um, also I would say go bigger than what you think because most everyone I know that's had a breast augmentation they always wished they had gone bigger uh, I think that if I got a little bit bigger, I, I mean, if I do get my breasts redone at any point, I would get them bigger, um, but I think that they're fine the way that they are, but getting them bigger is probably better than getting them smaller, because in your mind, I think you think they're going to be so gigantic, which they are in the beginning. I remember actually the day after I got my breasts done, uh, and note that you're all like sore and your body's, you know, crazy and you're all taped up and crazy. I went into the bathroom and I was like so disorientated and I lifted my shirt and I looked in the mirror and my breasts were like so huge and they were like my nipples and my nipples were like this. So my, my boobs were like this and my nipples were like this, like pointing. And I just was crying and crying. I was like, I'm just formed. I just formed myself. So give yourself some time after surgery. But definitely make sure you go to the right person. I had a friend who got her, I'm not going to say names, but she got a nose job. And she went to the same plastic surgeon that her mother went to, and her mother had great results. And then she went to that doctor, and the doctor took out too much from one side of the nose. So it was almost like he, like, took, like, uh, scooped. It, was, it looked like he scooped out the cartilage from one side, and the other side was straight. So she went back to that same doctor. He did an even worse job. And then she went to another doctor who had to rebuild her nose because that other doctor took out so much. So, you know... Do your research on good doctors. Also, you don't want to start too young. I mean, I know I started getting, I got my breasts done at a young age. Um, but with your face especially, you know, with Botox and fillers. And I know, you know, it's very in trend right now to have like big lips and you get your lips done. 
Um, if you want to get your lips done, that's totally fine. That is not going to permanently affect you. With Botox, Botox botulism is a very intense chemical and I, not that I'm telling people not to do something because I definitely think that you should prevent wrinkles, you know, if you feel that you're getting wrinkles, definitely use Botox. However, I feel like a lot of people that are very young, they'll get Botox around their eyes. Don't do that. Um, use a really good eye cream when you're about 27 or older. You, then you can look into getting Botox in that area. But as soon as you start getting Botox, you're going to have to continue getting Botox. And around your eyes is a very sensitive area. And that can really lead to things being worse later in life, like your eyes drooping and it being worse. I don't know this from personal experience, but I do know quite a few friends who have had this happen and it's very tragic. So I just, I want to let you know about, you know, definitely use sunscreen, definitely use eye creams, definitely use night creams. I have a nighttime tutorial for my skincare routine that I will link below, but you really want to make sure that with Botox, you don't start that until you're later on in life, unless you're very young. Some people get it as young as like 15, 16 because, you know, they'll play an instrument and they'll get the 11s, you know. So it's really up to you based on, you know, what you really think you need. But around your eyes is very sensitive. So I definitely have to recommend not doing that with Botox until you're um, a little older in life, you know. So I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching this. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Please like this video if you like it. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.